experiments you are about to see. In January 2000, he wore a protective bomb suit and at the end intentionally turned the machine's lid towards the ceiling. If there's ever been a time to say, don't try this. The instructions, which we He strictly followed the manual, two, but three, missed the most important one, step, attaching a canvas sack to the kettle. That the In the test, the Chinese the machine was not the fastest, but the way it worked was novel to the American audience. Local media called it an amazing terrorism promo and attracted tens of thousands of clicks on the first day, but it also triggered debates. Despite the co-host's clumsy operation, the old machine reminded many Chinese viewers of their child. Before long, in Zhuzhou, Hunan province, Pan Shuejun received a call from his son in Shenzhen who highly recommended this popcorn video. Pan was born in Guangzhou town and is now 57 years old. In the mid-1970s, he purchased a used popcorn machine for a little over 100 yuan and began to peddle popcorn. He had never expected he would do it for nearly 40 years. During these years, Pan traveled as far as Liaoyang to the north and Changsha to the south. Most people don't know his real name and only know him as Master Pan. Pan has been nearly everywhere within 100 kilometers of his home and the smell of popcorn lingers in every place he has visited. Popcorn in China dates back to the Song Dynasty. At that time, they made popped sticky rice which went by the name Bo Lo. In fact, popcorn was made as early as the Song Dynasty. The famous Song Dynasty poet, Fan Cheng Da, once mentioned in one of his works. But at that time, it had a different name, Bo Lo. Where did that name come from? I think it's from the local dialect. At that time, popcorn wasn't actually made from corn, but from cereals like millet and soybean. And in the local dialect, Bo Lo sounds a lot like Bao Gu, which means to pop cereals, so that might be why. The Song Dynasty poet Fan Cheng Da mentioned a tradition in the Wuzhong area, cooking popcorn for the Lantern Festival. This is believed to be the earliest record of popcorn. When spring came, people divined the coming year by cooking popcorn. For instance, girls divined their marriages and more pops meant a more auspicious divination. In the Ming Dynasty, popcorn divination flourished further. The poet Li Xu depicted the making of popcorn in Jiangnan every January. East of popular Suzhou, corn is popped for divination. Yellow kernels poured into a pan emerge as white flowers. In his poems, popcorn became a thing of beauty, full of the spice of life. Popcorn divination continued into the Qing dynasty. Popcorn had also been included in the daily diet and processed into various dishes and pastries. In the Qing dynasty, besides divination, popcorn was also used in cooking. According to the Guangdong anecdotes, there was a dish in Guangzhou that had popcorn in it as a kind of stuffing. So in the Qing dynasty, popcorn had different uses. 
a stove, a refitted hand-operated fan, and a kettle are all the tools Pan needs. At that time, my brother bought it for 135 yuan in Wugang. Back then, an apprentice made 8 cents a day, while professionals made up to 1.5 yuan. I realized that this wasn't too bad. If I could cook a few dozen kettles a day and sell them for 15 cents each, I could make 6 yuan a day. That was about the same as five carpenters. Because the money was good and I no longer had to wait for delayed paychecks or ask for the pay if it was withheld, I switched to this business. The busiest time of year for popcorn vendors used to be winter. People would be idling at home and would come out in droves at the cry from the vendor. Over the past 40 years, Pan has used two popcorn machines. The first one, which he used for more than 10 years, now lies in his attic. This was my first one. How long has it been lying here? More than 20 years. When did you buy it? Around 1970. This was my first kettle. I bought it around 1970 and used it for 17 or 18 years. It's still here. Later, I bought a bigger one. This one wasn't big enough. Pan says that despite the rust, it only needs a new pressure gauge and it's good to go. The old-fashioned machine boasts sturdiness. Chinese popcorn has a long history in China, but cookies like this one weren't invented until the 19th century in Great Britain. So they were also called British-style popcorn machines. In 1893, at the World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago, Charles Cretors unveiled his commercial popcorn cookers. As electricity became increasingly common in the 20th century, these cookers gradually disappeared in Western countries. During World War II, the old-style popcorn machine was brought to China. The old-fashioned, hand-operated machine consists of a kettle and a pressure gauge. It's part Chinese and part Western. Popcorn isn't a Chinese invention. But it has been in China for a long time. Meanwhile, the appearance of the steam cooker, the pressure kettle, ignited a popcorn revolution. In the 1960s, the rotating popcorn kettle turned up in China. It's made from cast iron and consists of 10 parts, including the handle, a pressure gauge and a lid. Before heating, plump sun-cured corn kernels are poured into the kettle along with sweeteners. The lid is shut and screwed down tight with an iron rod. Then, the kettle is placed on the stove and spun to heat it evenly. The pressure inside rises rapidly. As the gauge shows the right pressure, the kettle is removed from the fire. Now, it's important to attach a canvas sack to the kettle's mouth. The most important thing is proper heat. Make sure it is neither too high nor too low. Overheating will scorch the kettle and popcorn. 
While at insufficient heat, the corn will turn yellow and taste terrible. This is the first thing. The second is the proper use and maintenance of the machine. It must be airtight. Master the pressure and pay attention to the gauge. When time is up, remove it quickly. Two more seconds are enough to burn the corn. Penn is amused by the unskilled American co-host in the video. He says that a canvas bag or a net can prevent kernels that blast out of the kettle from flying everywhere. A bag or a net will let in air and help cool the popcorn, allowing people to enjoy it right away. They didn't open the lid in the right way. They should have kept the kettle on the rack. You must use a bag to catch the kernels. If they fall on the ground, they will go to waste. The suit is useless. A normal machine and pressure gauge are enough. It's completely unnecessary. If you wear that on a hot day in front of the stove, you won't be able to work. It's really unnecessary. When heating the kettle, Pan carefully monitors the pressure gauge. As long as the pressure stays within the limit, the kettle is safe. Generally, if the machine and the gauge work well, it will be fine. If the gauge shows that the pressure rises above a certain level, just release some of the pressure, otherwise the corn will be burned. But how does the machine turn corn into popcorn so quickly? What's the science behind this? The cooker makes use of air pressure. When heated in a confined space, corn kernels soften as the moisture inside them vaporizes. The high temperature leads to high vapor pressure, making the softened kernel puff up. At this point, the pressure balance between the inside and outside of the kernel keeps it from popping. When the pressure rises to about four or five atmospheres, the lid is opened. The vapor inside the kernel will expand sharply, breaking open its skin, and thus the popcorn is done. The temperature ranges between 180 and 300 degrees Celsius. Different ingredients require different temperatures. But the pressure range basically remains the same, between two and three atmospheres. I never did research on it, but there should be an exact figure. When the temperature and pressure reach a certain level, stomp down on the latch and it will erupt. When the lid is opened, the pressure is released with a loud bang. It's said that in the 1970s, it once gave visiting US President Richard Nixon quite a scare. On February the 26th, 1972, President Nixon was touring around Westlake in Hangzhou and suddenly heard a loud bang. The sound came from a vendor operating a popcorn machine. When Nixon asked about the cooker, his interpreter thought quickly and told him it was a grain expander. While the translation was not accurate, it did make sense. A small corn kernel expands to several dozen times its size when it is popped. Like I said, expands. So when the translator said it was a grain expander, it actually makes sense.
These traditional popcorn cookers, though they left the American media in awe, they are rare in China today. They enriched the memories of many Chinese who grew up in the 1960s and 70s. Before the reforms and opening up, China ranked low in living standards and snacks were rare treats for children everywhere in the country. Thus, the cheap, tasty popcorn became a children's favorite and the cooking process was a source of excitement. It was easy for the vendors. When the machine was set up, children would crowd around to watch as the vendor fired the charcoals and pumped the fan. Then came the bang. Some children would cheer, while others got scared and covered their ears as if a firecracker had just gone off. The kids were excited. There was popcorn everywhere. Then, the vendor bagged the popcorn while the children scrambled for kernels left lying around. It was like that. This picture book, a popcorn seller published in the early 1980s, tells the love story of a young pop. more of his time in the countryside than in cities. Now, he plans to visit the provincial capital Changsha once every two years. He hopes to witness the city change and to remind people in the bustling cities of the craft of popcorn making. It's connected to a wheel gear. This is the handlebar. I snapped it in half and use it to control the rotation. If it's too fast, I slow down. It's connected to a battery. In 2003, Ren moved from Puyang in Henan to Baoding. Years ago, he bought a popcorn machine from an old craftsman and began to learn making popcorn. Every winter, he would peddle popcorn in nearby communities. Every year, around February the 2nd of the lunar calendar, Ren would go to the Long Tan Temple Fair. February the 2nd is both a day of worship for the Dragon King and a day to eat popcorn. 
In northern China, the myth about how the people rescued the Dragon King with blossoming gold beans is well known. The legend is closely related to popcorn. Why? Because at that time, after Empress Wu Zetian took the throne, the Jade Emperor ordered the four Dragon Kings to stop the rain. But the Jade Dragon had sympathy with the humans. He defied the Jade Emperor's order and used water from the Heavenly River to create rain. The Jade Emperor was enraged. He exiled the Dragon King and imprisoned him under a mountain, banning his return to heaven until the golden beans blossom. How could a golden bean blossom? Then there was an old woman selling golden bean flowers made from popped corn and soybeans. All the local households began frying corn and soybean and screamed, the golden beans blossom. The jade dragon was saved and returned to heaven. Ren's old-fashioned cooker still attracts a crowd wherever he goes. Many people consider popcorn making an art. Unlike hand-operated cookers, Ren's machine rotates automatically on its rack. He says he decided to refit his machine because operating it manually used to exhaust him on busy days. Ren refitted his machine's rack and used a chain to connect the kettle to a motor. This has made his work easier and freed up time for him to make other puffed foods. Ren was proud of his invention. Using his rich experience, he went on to renovate the inside of the kettle, replacing the turned metal lid with a steel one. Thus, his popcorn no longer contained traces of lead. As living standards improved, some customers began to ask him to help process chestnuts, pine nuts and hazelnuts. Most people, however, still came for popcorn. Most buyers are elderly. They only need to pay around 5 yuan for a packet of popcorn. To them, it's a taste from the past. In fact, most city dwellers buy the popcorn not only for its taste, but also to bring back old memories. This is a need that the butter or chocolate flavored modern popcorn products cannot fulfill. The evolution from the old kettle popcorn to the latest products that come in multiple flavors and fragrances reflects our country's development from a starvation-stricken nation to an advanced economy. It also reflects China's progress and improved living standards. Unlike Ren Binke, who has his refitted cookers, Zhang Xiaokao still uses a traditional popcorn machine. He is one of the few remaining popcorn craftsmen in Baoding. He moved here from his village in the early 1990s, along with several relatives. He also brought with him the popcorn craft of his hometown.
This seemingly simple craft was the only thing they could rely on to make a good living. Since then, popcorn bangs have become frequent in the city's alleyways. But popping popcorn would never make him rich. At that time, the profit from one kettle of popcorn was less than one yuan. At first, it was 50 cents per kettle. In those days, housing, coal, everything was cheap, totally different from today. Now, everything is expensive. They lived a tough life in poor conditions. Before long, his relatives returned home, but Zheng remained and has now spent more than 20 years here. Each month, Zhang lived only on part of his income while the rest was saved and sent home. Now three of his fellow townsmen have joined him in the craft. Zhang is not the eldest amongst them, but his early arrival and rich experience have earned him the title chief. Zhang never refitted his machines. In particular, he has used the fan which is indispensable for popcorn making for more than a decade. This small thing is key to controlling the heat. Today, it has become hard to come by and only senior carpenters can make it. Popcorn vendors like Zhang, who still use it, are even rarer. To make the work easier, many people use electric air blowers. But the old-fashioned fan has a unique advantage. On windy days, besides facilitating heat control, just changing the fan's position helps reduce the effect of the wind on the burning charcoals. In June, the weather in the ancient city is scorching. Zhang knows well that there won't be much business in this heat. Six months have passed since he left home. In the coming days, he'll go back to work on his farm and he wants to earn some extra cash to help cover the family's expenditures. Today is Children's Day and the parks are full of children. Since popcorn is popular with kids, Jung expects better than usual earnings today. However, vending is banned in the park, so Jung has had to set up his booth at a considerable distance from it. The kettle's loud bangs fail to attract the children. Used to fancier snacks, children in Chinese cities have no interest in the traditional popcorn. Zhang is a little down because he knows that the old popcorn machine and the special joy it used to bring 
will not be a part of these children's memories. In June, it's getting hot and popcorn sales continue to fall. Jung knows it's time to leave. Before leaving, he treats his three friends to a meal. Though they live together, the grueling daily work leaves them with little time to chat. They may be the last popcorn craftsmen in the city. We asked several times for Jung's permission to film his life in his rented room, but he politely refused. He was worried that it would hurt his family if they saw his messy room on TV. He suggests we focus on his happy times instead. It does be three or four still doing this. We are going to keep this craft alive. It's not profitable. Life has been tough. As times change, the traditional cooker has been replaced by newer popcorn cookers and microwave ovens. Even on the streets, it's getting rarer. At night, Chung goes to sell popcorn at the crossroad like he usually does. He's leaving tomorrow, but after all these years, selling popcorn at night has become a habit that he can't get rid of. He has no way of knowing that hundreds of kilometers away in Juzhou, where a scorching summer has begun, Pan, who is in his late 50s, has all but retired as a popcorn vendor. Ren has also put down his popcorn cooker and moved to selling fruit. During our interviews, Jung would often ask whether the popcorn craft will be listed as intangible cultural heritage. Facing these questions, we were unable to provide an answer. Maybe someday, the natural aroma of popcorn will become an icon of the times, resting deep in people's memories.